So today we're in my kitchen because I want to talk about Raspberry Pis. Not baking them, but the computer version. So this is a Raspberry Pi, and essentially what this is, is a small board computer. It's an entire computer, a bit like your MacBook or your laptop or the desktop you have, but lower power, lower processing power that is, um, dialed down into a much smaller form factor. So most of the action takes place on this Broadcom chip here. This is called a system on a chip. So CPU and RAM and things like that, I think on this chip, I could be wrong, but basically this is an entire computer that has the CPU and the RAM built in. For storage, there's only this thing, micro SD card. Now this, as we'll see in a moment, determines what our small board computer, what our Raspberry Pi does. Uh, obviously this is an audio hi-fi channel, so we're gonna be talking about how to use this as a network streamer. So today I wanna to tackle the Raspberry Pi, a beginner's guide to the Raspberry Pi as a network streamer. Now we're gonna see a lot of gear on the way um, because this is not a review of those individual components, I don't have the time to talk a lot about how this DAC compares to that DAC or this board compares to that board. I might just use very simplistic terms like this is better than this in the main. So be prepared for that because I really want to show the process of what you need to do to get up and running and some of the things you can consider to improve the sound of your Raspberry Pi as a network streamer. Now, here, I have a Raspberry Pi in its official plastic case. You can see it in here. And you can see the micro SD card in the back. So we've got HDMI, don't use that very much. This thing here is the five volt input. So if we have a power brick, this is how this thing is powered. It's like a five volt input like that, always. Well, pretty much always anyway. Um, and then on this side, Ethernet and four USB ports. So you can see how this is a fairly tidy little computer solution. And people use Raspberry Pis all over the world for all sorts of things. I think they were originally developed um, for school kids, but our focus obviously is audio. So if we think about the audio on this thing, we can just hook up the three and a half mil socket here and use the internal DAC. So there's a DAC inside here that converts digital to analog, and then just hook this into our hi-fi system. Um, obviously we have to connect either ethernet. Some of these things do Wi-Fi. Now, before we go further with hardware, we need to talk about software because you might remember at the start, I mentioned micro SD card. What we put on this determines what the hardware will do or how the hardware will be used. There are a whole host of operating systems, Linux-based operating systems, that we can write to this SD card. So there are options for Rune, Squeezebox, UPnP. There's a whole host of them. There are literally hundreds. We're gonna look at three now, I think three. Yeah, and I'll show you how to get the operating system onto here. So this, this is Volumio. This is an operating system for Raspberry Pi. It's also available for other different small board computers. But if you want to download that, we'll click that there. PyCore Player is good for Squeezebox emulation or Squeezebox server. My favorite Rune Bridge or Rune Ready operating system is called Ropey. I use this quite a bit. So let's say we download this. So we can get the, the latest Ropey from here and it's downloading down here. This is a bin file. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna write this file to our micro SD card, an image file basically, like an operating system image. And it, that sounds complicated, but it's really not. And it's not because of some software that I use called Balina Etcher. It used to just be called Etcher. I think it was bought by a different company, I'm not sure. So we open this. So what we can do first of all, so while that's still downloading, connect our 
micro SD card here to an adapter because it needs to be USB-C because this is a MacBook. Connect it in like that. So now the Mac will see that that card is connected. And we've still got 39 seconds, almost there. Talk amongst yourselves. And there we are, that's now done. And that's a two gigabyte file. So we select it, we select, select our image. It's now in a downloads folder, so there it is, Ropey OS, and there's the version. Bin is the image file. Click open. Then generic storage media. It's already found the micro SD card. Eight gigabytes on there, and then we click flash. And then I have to type in my password here, so this is all very secret. And you can see it's starting and it's flashing now. So it's writing Ropey OS onto the micro SD card. This takes a few minutes. I've written the operating system now to this micro SD card. I can put it inside the Pi, so like that. So this is ready to be booted up. I mean, we connect the ethernet, we connect the audio out, we connect the power, we start it up. Rupee is a, a little bit unusual in it self configures, so it takes some time, so don't be too impatient with it. There's information on the Rupee website about that. But then this is now a Rune ready endpoint. So this is 35 euros for the the Raspberry Pi board. I think it's about 10 euros for the case. And then the power supply is another five euros, eight euros. So we've got a room ready endpoint for about 50 euros, just over. And I think that's really cool. But the thing is we're using the internal DAC inside here. Now that's built just to function, just to create sound. It's built to a price, it's built to the form factor of the board here. And in fact, we can do a lot better. And that's where things like the AudioQuest Dragonfly Black come in. Because instead of using the internal DAC, we can have this operate as our DAC. So we connect that to the Pi. So this is a hundred euros. And then we get a cable again. Instead of, go instead of going from here, where we were before, we use the DAC inside the AudioQuest dongle. And that gives us a much better sound. Not just a little bit better, a much better. I mean, you need a reasonably okay hi-fi system to hear this, or headphone system, but I think most people would. Now, obviously we don't have to use dongle DACs like this with the USB connector built in. We can take a USB cable like this, and then we connect that to here. And that means now we can bring in our $100 shit Modi 3 DAC and now we have a different kind of room ready streamer. So this takes care of the, the digital streaming. It sends the digital audio along the USB cable into this shit DAC. And then we connect the shit DAC to our hi-fi or head-fi system using these two RCA sockets here. So all up room ready streamer here, a very good sounding room ready streamer is about 150 euros all up roughly. <laughs> So back to our naked Raspberry Pi, we can connect a USB DAC to any of these four USB ports here. But the beauty of the Raspberry Pi ecosystem is that we can add things like this. This is, this is a hat, hardware attached on top. So this is a DAC. This is a DAC board made by Alo. It's called the Boss DAC. Again, like the shit, like the AudioQuest, it's designed with sound quality in mind, unlike the DAC inside the Pi. And this connects using the 40 pin riser here onto the Raspberry Pi. So I'll be careful not to break it. So what's going on here? Okay, so what this board does is it 
pulls up the digital audio received by the Pi, and then this board decodes the audio and sends it out through these two RCAs here into your amplifier. And that's pretty cool. And I'd say this Boss DAC was kind of on the level of the AudioQuest Dragonfly Black or the Shit Modi 3. I don't want to get into the, the minutiae of these products here because this is a more of a general video. But this kind of setup really opens us up to more possibilities. Now, obviously, Alo are not the only company that make um, DAC boards like this. There are many different kinds of DAC boards, so you don't have to just pick this one. I think this sells for about 60 euros. So it's actually a more affordable way to get better sound out of the Pi. And sharp observers will have noticed that no longer can we put this inside here. You can get acrylic cases for this, and you can, you can actually buy this like pre-built inside a case with a Volumio operating system on the card here. Um, but I wanted to pull that apart. I hate the look of the acrylic cases. I think they look cheap and nasty. So yeah, mine's over there. But um, this is what it looks like on the inside. I think this is very cool. This is a very decent way to pull audio out of our pie. Notice there are no physical buttons on a Raspberry Pi. So if we want to control it, we can't, you know, volume up, volume down on here or anything like that. That's why we connect it to the network. So we control it over the network using a smartphone app or a desktop app, so a computer or a phone. So behind me here in the white Hi-Fi Racks rack, on the top, I've set up a Raspberry Pi based streamer, connected it to my amplifier. And it is running the Ropey software that we installed earlier on. So it shows up in Rune in the settings. So I've got this running here as a, we can see this here. This is a, it says Boss DAC. So that's the, the Allo Boss DAC on the top of the Raspberry Pi. But yeah, so I can now control that. I can stream Rune content to it. But had I not installed Rupi and instead of if I'd gone for the Squeezebox OS, the Pi Core player, or if I'd gone for Volumio, I'd use different smartphone apps. The Squeezebox one, I can use Squeezebox app. So I use, um, what's it called? I use Orange Squeeze on an Android phone. Uh, on an iPad, I prefer iPeng. And Volumio is accessible through a web browser, so either on phone, desktop. Um, so there are many ways to control it, but they have to be done across the network using third-party devices. off this one. This is a Raspberry Pi underneath here. There's a hat on top, so another add-on board. But this one is not a DAC board. Um, this is a, made by a company called Just Boom, and what it does is it pulls the digital audio up from the Raspberry Pi and converts it into um, Toslink and coaxial. So then, then we can use these connections for our DAC. So if we don't have a USB DAC, we want to go Toslink or coaxial into our DAC, we can use these two. And Toslink is quite unusual, I think, on a Raspberry Pi hat board like this. I mean, I've used this um, with the Cord Mojo, actually. So I went Toslink from this into Toslink here. And so again, we have a nice stack. And this, this lid goes on here. I'm not putting it back on because it's actually a real pain to get off. Now, if you're the kind of person that thinks that digital audio is just ones and zeros, it's all the same, then you can stop watching now because you're done. We're done. <laughs> because the next thing I'm gonna talk about is differences in digital audio and that may offend your sensibilities. So please don't at me in the comments. I'm giving you fair warning here.
So inside this metal box is, as you can see here from the ports, there's a Raspberry Pi. There is also, as you can see here, a hat on top. That's called the Digi One. It's also made by Allo, the same people that made this Boss DAC. And it kind of looks like that inside here, but it doesn't have a DAC on board. It doesn't have analog outputs. Instead, we have digital outputs. And what the board does is it improves the, the quality of the digital signal coming out from the coax and the BNC. We can use either or here. And that way I can then connect this to any DAC that has coaxial input. So for example, ship mode 3 its coaxial input is here. So I could put these two together, cable it from here to here. So some of you might be asking, well, why would I use this and not this? And of course, if those of you who I said should stop watching now are still watching and you still think that ones and zeros is all that digital audio is about, you will think that these two things sound the same and they don't. So when I connect this one to a DAC, I get a better, yeah, better quality signal, a better quality sound than when I connect this one to a DAC. It's a small difference, but it still matters to me and it matters to many other people. So what's wonderful about the world of Raspberry Pi with the network streaming angle is that we can have coaxial or if we need Toslink, we can add Toslink here very easily. Or we could have a DAC like this on here. Or we could still just use the USB outputs here and go into Dragonfly, Modi, Mojo, that kind of thing. But this is the big difference really, and I think this is, I think for digital audio enthusiasts like me, this is important, is that the USB output on a Raspberry Pi, it's not great, it doesn't sound all that good, it's just got this hardness to it, this sort of metallic sheen, which we don't get from here. So I know I said I wouldn't get into the technical nitty gritty of um, sound quality and things like that, but I, I'll end on these thoughts. So for me, this is, this is the Blue Sound Node 2i, and it has digital outputs, analog outputs, and I think the digital outputs on this Allo streamer are just a little bit smoother than on this Blue Sound. I'd also say if you put together this Allo with this shit DAC, you've got a solution that sort of operates in the same ballpark as this as a standalone box. And obviously if you swap out the shit for the Mojo, let's go like that, then this for me is more resolving, cleaner, more transparent than this in terms of analog outputs. However, you buy the Blue Sound Node 2i if you're not comfortable with burning a, burning? Yeah, I guess you could call it burning because the software's called burn. Basically writing an operating system to the micro SD card, which I showed earlier. So if you think all of that's a bit of a, a bit of a pain in the ass, which it can be for many people, I understand that, or if you have to choose the software or you don't know what operating system. So you buy the Blue Sound Node 2i because you want a completely pre-configured solution. So it's rune ready, but then using the Blue OS app, you get Tidal, Kobos, Deezer, Amazon, maybe Amazon, I think Amazon. Anyway, um, this is for people who don't like computers, don't want to mess around with the kind of the more fiddly nature of Raspberry Pi building. But if you're okay with the sort of fiddly nature of Raspberry Pi um, system compilation, you know, putting hats together, writing micro SD cards, you know, worrying about connections, then you can save a little bit of money um, and sometimes get a better sound. So you have to decide which one of these sort of setups is right for you. This video was about a beginner's guide to Raspberry Pi, but I just wanted to close by putting this stuff in context with more um, consumer focused products that come to market. Anyway, if you found this video in any way useful, please give us a thumbs up, a like, down here. If you like this kind of video, I'll do one of these every few months, I think, like a beginner's guide too. 
Um, uh, yeah, if you like that, then please subscribe to this channel to get notifications. And as always, thank you so much for watching.